Welcome to another session of Tips and Techniques for Maltus. Today's topic is hidden files in Snow Leopard. Occasionally someone might uh, tell you to go edit such and such a file in user local bin and tell you that will fix whatever problem you have. Um, and that sounds easy enough until you open up Finder and navigate to the root of your drive and realize there is no user folder. There's a users, but not a user. Problem is it's hidden. Um, and so although you could open up terminal and get to it that way by typing commands, um, you can't just find it in Finder. Uh, well, Snow Leopard has introduced a new ability to see uh, hidden areas pretty easily, uh, but it doesn't work directly from Finder. It works within an application. So I'm going to open up an application. In this case, I opened up Smultron, which is a free editor you can download. And because Smultron was designed to edit things like configuration files and scripts and things that are very often stored in hidden areas, uh, it's always had a function called open hidden. Um, that function is now obsolete in Snow Leopard because every application, uh, if you just go to the normal open dialog or the save dialog, um, you can see hidden files. So we'll go to Macintosh, the top level directory, and at this point you may think, what is he talking about? Uh, I still don't see a user folder. Uh, and that's because by default, hidden folders and hidden files still are hidden. But there's a new key combination. It's shift command period. And if I type that, lo and behold, a whole bunch of files appear that had been hidden before. Um, among them, you'll see a lot of files that begin with a period. In OS X and most Unix file systems, uh, the naming convention is if a file begins with a period, it is hidden. Uh, you could find that out yourself. Uh, if you create a document and save it with a name that starts with a period, it'll disappear. It's still there, it's just hidden. But that's not the only thing that was hidden. Uh, you'll also see there's a lot of folders that you didn't see before, including user, USR. Uh, user, and you open up local, and open up bin, and hopefully whatever file you've been told to edit is there, and you're in good shape. Uh, this is a toggle, so hitting it again, shift command period, will make all the hidden files go away. Um, but whether you're in the open dialog box or the save dialog box, that's how you can get to hidden areas, um, including it enables searching in those hidden areas. So um, that's great if you're in an application. Uh, but what if you really do want to just be in Finder and browse to user local bin and perhaps copy a file out of there? Um, you're kind of stuck. Uh, well, not entirely. Uh, there is the ability to use the Go menu choose go to folder and now that I know it is spelled USR local bin in lowercase um, I could type that in and hit go and end up in user local bin uh, however the purpose of a GUI is so you don't have to know something and then type it it's so you can browse around recognize what you're looking for and just click on it um, and if you didn't know it was spelled USR as opposed to USER, uh, you never would have typed it correctly. So we still need a way to do what we can do in the open and save dialog boxes, and that's to be able to show hidden files or not show hidden files at will. And since that's not built in, we'll just have to add the function. And you can do that with Automator. Uh, I'm going to start up Automator, um, use a command space to bring up spotlight to just start typing automator. That's often the quickest way to bring up an application. And when automator starts, if you haven't been into it before, uh, of course you won't notice any differences. If you've been into it in Leopard, you'll notice there are some new templates. So we're going to use the service template. And the function we want is under the utilities library. Let's actually run shell script, because what we're going to show you how to do can be done just by typing commands. Uh, we're just going to automate those commands. So drag out, run shell script. Um, 
but I only want this to work in Finder, so I'm going to change any application to Finder. And there is no input for it, so I'm going to change it to no input. A uh, quick note, a little quirk, if you choose no input first, you won't then see Finder as an option for this field. So make sure you do it in the order I just showed you. Change it to Finder, and then change it to no input. And then we can type in our script. Uh, now I cheated, I have it sitting in the clipboard, because um, I copied this function from a website. Uh, and that website is now at the bottom of your page, if you'd like to do the same thing. Um, and basically what this script does is it tells Finder to quit. It checks to see what the current setting of a parameter called Apple Show All Files that's in Finder's preference file or plist, com.apple.finder. And whatever it's set at, it toggles it to the opposite. So if it's false, it sets it to true. If it's true, it sets it to false. And then it restarts Finder. Um, the reason we have to start and stop Finder is this particular preference is only checked uh, when Finder starts up. Um, so we can't make it quite as clean as it was in the open dialog box and change it on the fly, um, but at least it works. And so we can now say file save, give it a name, perhaps uh, toggle hidden files. That'll be the name of our new service. We hit save, and we're done. Close Automator, and if I go to Finder and look at its services menu, lo and behold, there's toggle hidden files. And we could run it from here, um, but remember our goal was to make this as easy or as close to as easy as it is in an open dialog box, and that means assigning it to a keystroke. So we'll go into System Preferences. Go to the keyboard area, and notice I'm in keyboard shortcuts. So if you ended up in keyboard, click on keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to click on services, and now added under the general section is my new service, toggle hidden files. Uh, what's not as obvious is there is a field over here for the shortcut, which only appears if you double click on that area. So double click to the right of it, and we're going to give it shift command period. As we'll make it act exactly as it did before in the open dialog boxes. Uh, good news is that's a built-in shortcut, and built-in shortcuts always override user-assigned shortcuts. So uh, assigning this keystroke here will have no effect on it working as I showed you before in the open dialog boxes. Um, and so we're pretty much done. Uh, and if I go back and look at services, you'll see that it now tells you that that's the keyboard shortcut. So let's try it. Shift, Command, period. Um, it may take a moment. Um, depending on what you were doing in Finder, it actually, um, you may have to complete whatever you were doing in Finder. But notice Finder stopped, restarted, and when it restarted, all my hidden files are visible. Now, they're still hidden. Um, you can see they're grayed out. It hasn't changed them from being hidden files. It just allows Finder to view them, search them, etc. cetera. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if we want to change it back, shift command period, we'll reverse the process, um, and it will eventually come back. So hopefully that helped. You learned a little bit about uh, seeing hidden files and how to find them and search for them, some new Snow Leopard functionality in the open and save dialog boxes, um, and an example of how you can use Automator uh, to make the operating system work exactly the way you'd want, um, even if there's a function that Apple chose not to include for some reason. So Hope that helps. Uh, Finder should be back up in a few moments uh, with all the files hidden again. Um, but rather than wait for that, I think we'll end it here. So um, that's it till next time.